my goal here is to give you nine, if you will, nine items that uh, nine problems in project. And these are common. So let me start off by just giving you a little bit more info here about me. Here I am. Um, I'm a, a senior trainer at the Versal Company. And um, uh, you can see by the picture that uh, I'm a gray beard. Been around a long time, saw a lot of issues in, in the discipline of project management, portfolio management, and of course in the tools of project management. including summary tasks in project sequencing. Now I know, I know that a lot of you folks that are out there, it do include your project summary tasks in sequencing. And some of you are probably scratching your head right now saying, wait a minute, what does he mean that this is a mistake? Well, let me demonstrate this to you. I'm going to go into project now and just kind of set up the scenario for you. So here we go in Microsoft Project. Summary tasks, for those of you that are not aware of them, are those activities that represent subtasks. So if you're looking at the screen now, notice that, that uh, there's a task number one here, the title includes summary tasks in your project sequencing, and then under that there's two sub-summaries, and under them are two final tasks. So when we say summary tasks, we're talking about tasks that organize, tasks that represent those tasks subordinated or subbed under them. So summary two, for example, takes the details from tasks three and four and, and uh, represents the sum. This information rolls up to the summary task. So things like the uh, cost of tasks three and four and the work in tasks three and four will roll up to the summary activities and then from there they, the, the summary activities roll up their data into the upper level summary until we finally get to the project level where I'm pointing out right now and at the project level we capture uh, the project data. So this outlining function, outlining feature, gives you the opportunity to summarize. Now, what is not represented is duration. For summary tasks, that's the amount of time here, the length of the task. The amount of time is represented from the start of the earliest task to the finish of the latest. So it's not the sum of the durations, it's just those two points that roll up. Now, a couple, uh, couple of concepts here. Sequencing activities. Um, if we sequence tasks one and two as an example, so I'll highlight them on the task tab. I'll click on the link button. That's in the schedule subgroup. You'll notice that a link is created. I want to zoom in here for a moment. These links in between tasks are within a summary level. So these tasks are within this summary level. These tasks are within this summary level. Remember what they represent. The summaries are representing the details of the tasks that are under them. So if we needed to, for example, to ensure that uh, a, one task in one level was followed a task in another level, oftentimes I'll see an individual go, you know, I'm not sure which task in this first level is going to be the predecessor, the driving task in another level, so I'll just link my two summary tasks as well. So they highlight the summaries and they link the summaries thereby not understanding and creating an error potential in any way error situation. When summary tasks are included in the linking, in the sequencing, you greatly increase the chance for extending your project duration. Let me say that again in case you missed it. When a summary tasks are included in the sequencing, you greatly increase the chance for extending your project duration. 
And if you watch the screen, allow me to show you why. If my task one, the task where I'm circling, is to be the predecessor, the task that drives, task three, we would expect task three to move into the beginning of the week in which it's currently being scheduled. When I create that link, here we go, the link is created, but the schedule cannot allow task three to move in. And the reason is because the summary tasks are sequenced. These two summary tasks uh, in English means the first summary task must be completed before any task in the second summary can start. Okay? thereby extending the project duration by, the, uh, uh, by this amount, by the amount that it could have moved in. Once or twice in a project uh, may not be a big deal to the schedule, but a large project that, that occurs over a great deal of time, the more of these, the bigger the opportunity for a, a schedule that is ineffectual at best and possibly not, tentative, not tenable to begin with. As I unlink these tasks, the summaries, watch what happens to the second set of tasks here. By taking the summary tasks out of the sequence, I can now accommodate the, um, the link between activity task one and activity task three and schedule it as uh, assertively or as aggressively as I want to. This difference in the time frame can be the difference in having tenable project and not having a tenable project. So rule of thumb, don't include summary tasks in your project sequencing. Now, if it is true that an entire phase or an entire summary level has to be uh, done before an entire summary level, then uh, one of the other best practices is to keep your sequencing within the, ta within the summary level, okay, and then, but not cross those summary task boundaries. So in other words, your summaries could be linked, summary tasks could be linked, but within each summary level uh, list of activities, those sequences don't move, don't link outside. Now, that's number one. Let me go back now to the second in my list here of activities, including summary tasks and project sequencing. Until you're absolutely aware, absolutely sure, then I would not have that sequencing uh, at the summary level. 